Hallelujah.
God is still your peace But remember some words And it's these Years peace transcends all of these Thank you, Father. Hallelujah. And the uncertainty of times. On the horizons, men see dark clouds, clouds of oppression, clouds of hopelessness, clouds of despair. But have I not said in my word that I would send bright clouds? They will be full of hope. They'll be full of deliverance. They'll be full of victory. And out of that shall come my glory upon the earth of this hour and in the darkness of the forces against the kingdom of God, there shall be a rendering. There shall be an assault out of the kingdom where the gates of hell shall not prevail against the church. For we're rising in this hour and arising in this time is a mighty army, men and women of faith and of the Holy Ghost who've been waiting, who've been waiting, who've been waiting for the go. And yea, the Lord says, go. The Lord says, move. The Lord says, go after that which burns in your heart. Watch my hand of power and my hand of authority be released as never before. For that which cometh upon the earth in the days ahead has not been seen in the earth since the fall. Great shall it be, mighty shall it be, and this mighty army that walks through the earth, full of faith and the Holy Ghost, shall render the works of the enemy powerless and ineffective. All is not lost. Oh, Oh, 
O sadabre con the stick of that. Oh, this this is she commande. This young generation is not forsaken. The Lord shall work mightily. Oh, and turn that which the enemy oh, has, worked, has tried so hard to destroy. I shall have a great end gathering, says the Lord. For I have reserved to myself those who will go and those who will minister and those who will have a great effect upon them. Oh, ha, 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 ha. And yea, the older, the older, those set in their ways that the naysayers say is too late. Yea, I will have my way there also, says the Lord. For that which I bring on the earth will not be limited to this group or to that group, but it shall move throughout the earth to all cultures, to all generations, to all ethnic origins shall the hand of the Lord be revealed and great shall be the ingathering and great shall be the harvest and great shall be the glory of God manifest in the earth. And it be shown to all men that I am the Lord and there is none else. Ha, ha, ha. Prepare. Hallelujah. Release. Go. Do. For the Lord is at hand. The hour. Oh, time has been compressed. I am compressing time. Things are winding up. The glorious appearing. Oh, Saddam. Comes quickly. As a thief in the night. But I will have my way in the earth before that takes place, says the Lord. Ha, 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 ha. Glory to God. Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, my, 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 my. Amen. Amen. Andre Ero mande. <laughs> yeah. yeah, the distractions of life. The distractions of life that have affected many in the kingdom are losing their hold and their taste. For I stir the hearts of men and women, I stir them by my presence. And I woo and bid thee, come unto me, says the Lord, in this hour. Separate yourself unto me. And you will see more and more that as you look unto me, the things of this earth shall lose their hold, shall lose their desire, and your heart shall yearn for me as never before. And I will pour in to thee afresh and anew my spirit. Oh, in desires long lost, in desires long laid aside, shall be resurrected. And desires that replaced shall be cut off. And the glory of the Lord shall rest upon thee. Oh, my dad sucker. The glory of the Lord shall saturate thee. And the glory of the Lord shall emanate from thee as you go forth in my power and my glory. And the nation shall be turned. The hearts of men and women shall look unto the Lord and come into the kingdom. For this is the hour. This is the hour of that which has been spoken by prophets of old. That which has been declared even in these latter days by the prophets of these days, my word in their mouth is declaring that transformation and the transfer of the greatest treasure of all, men and women and children, from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of my son, 
So rejoice in your hearts. Be glad. Let, so, let the song of victory and the shout of hallelujah come forth from thy lips. For you shall see the Lord work more than you can even imagine. And the mouths of the enemy and his cohorts shall be stopped. Their folly shall be exposed. And my mighty church shall rise to her place and carry this gospel to all the nations in a sweeping move of my hand, says the Lord. Multitudes, multitudes, who've stood in the valley of decision shall be swept into my kingdom. For this is the hour. This is the time, says the Lord. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Just lift your hands and thank the Lord. Hallelujah. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Hallelujah. <laughs> this is the hour. This is the hour of the Lord. Hallelujah. It shall be, even as he spoke. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen, amen, amen. Turn around and tell somebody and say, it shall be as the Lord said. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, turn around and say somebody, look at somebody and say, Amen. Amen. Then you can be seated. Praise God. Glory to God. Amen. Hallelujah. Mm. I heard the Lord say this morning while I was standing here that um, while I was singing, this is. Uh, um, The city, whatever that song is. God of the city. I heard the Lord say bright clouds. Not dark clouds, bright clouds. Hallelujah. And that's what the Word of God says. It'll be bright clouds. Amen? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Well, I'm excited. I don't know about you. Amen? Amen, 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 amen. Well, let's just see how we, <laughs> how we proceed. Amen. Glad to see all of you this morning. Glad to have Jesse and Kat back. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. They got back last night at 920-ish. Yep. And uh, they had a wonderful day. They caught their uh, initial flight out of the um, country. I can say it now, yeah. Out of Istanbul. Yeah. Uh, and they caught there. They were getting to the gate on last call. They went through a bunch of stuff to get to the plane, two different security points and all kinds of stuff, and, and uh, they're running through the airport, and they, they walk up to the gate on last call. That's not a good, th that's not a good time to show up. I mean, it's better than after gates or cl doors closed and then backed away, but, you know, then they got to Germany went and got interrogated, and I mean, had to take everything out of their bags and explain why they were where they were, who they knew, what each other's name was, when were they born, you know, what fate, what was their favorite food. I don't know. They just got interrogated by the Germans. You know. Nine, nine. <laughs> and I, I'm sure they probably wouldn't say, I know nothing. I see nothing. Colonel <laughs> Cleek. <clears throat> Hallelujah. Amen. And got to Chicago and got, uh, I guess, almost strip searched coming back into the country. Had to, I mean, they just went through it yesterday. So Mama Bear and Papa Bear, when they got home and got into the car, had glass bottle cheer wines waiting for them. <laughs> they, knew ex they knew exactly what to do with them. I mean, I, I handed it back to Kat, we handed it to Jesse, and, but, and but by the time I turned back around to her, <laughs> <laughs> glory to God. Oh, hallelujah. There's a change taking place. 
spiritual atmosphere is changing. Amen. Hallelujah. Don't, I'll be honest with you folks, turn off the media. Yeah. Right. Pray in tongues and pray in the Holy Ghost until you're hearing out of heaven. Hear out of heaven. Don't listen to them. They're liars. They they do what they do for one reason only: profits. Amen. Well, they got Fox. Really? So now that Fox is the, is the Holy Ghost. No, it's not. I mean, if you are going to listen to anything, go to Victory Channel. Listen to their news on Victory Channel. Okay. Um, that is that's on the it's on the cable. And you can look at the internet. That's Brother Copeland. I mean, you know, they, they didn't want him on one of the Christian networks anymore because they were going a different direction. So he started his own. He got all the word people on there. <laughs> so hallelujah. And they got news. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you, want, if you want to listen to anything, watch them and listen to them. Amen. Oh, okay. Flashpoint. Yeah. So anyway, get into the spirit. Hear from heaven the word of the Lord. How am I going to get? Well, we're talking about how to do it. Get yourself settled down in the spirit so you can hear what God says. Settle down into the Holy Ghost. Amen. Hallelujah. Well, uh, next Sunday is back to school Sunday. I mean, even you old folk and some of us younger folk. We got some people here older than me. Jerry, Dick, Bill, Steve. How old are you? Joe. Now, I'm not going to mess with any of the women. We don't talk about that with women. <laughs> Benny. See, I'm young. I'm still, I'm still seeing visions. <laughs> you old folks are having dreams. That, that Praise the Lord. I know I said the old, old people, men would dream dreams. The young men would uh, see visions. Yeah, there's a vision. <laughs> Hallelujah. But then, you know, so wear some school garb, all right? I'm hoping it still fits, but my football jersey from high school. And the last time I put it on, I'm thinking, I used to wear this with the shoulder pads and stuff under it. And it wasn't this tight. <laughs> you know, big, those big old shoulder pads, you know, and stuff. Anyway. So back. Kids, whatever your school colors are, wear them. Amen. Hallelujah. If, you, if you're in, you know, um, homeschool, come up with a homeschool color for your homeschool. Amen. You know, you be, you know, be part of it. Amen. Hallelujah. So that is going to be a casual dress Sunday. <clears throat> Don't mean we're going to be casual about the things of God. Okay. Hallelujah. And then sometime, and we'll, we'll find a date, but sometime uh, next few weeks, Jess and Cap are going to, I want to give them time to uh, assimilate and decompress and get everything out, what took place over the last six weeks. And um, what, they, what they saw, uh, some things were, Difficult. You know, they saw an Antioch was difficult. I mean, um, it's, it's, I don't think they could, did you take pictures of that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, it, it is just a, it looks like a war zone. And it just completely, completely annihilated, wiped out. I mean, no services. So you got a bunch of world aid in there. <coughs> but what they, they saw that. They got, they went there and saw that. And, um, might be like walking into a war zone after a bomb had went off and seeing, seeing everything. Um, but then they had things happened in the youth services and the main services. Mark Hankins brought the Holy Ghost. <laughs> yeah, hallelujah. And I don't know if they were ready for him or not, but he, he came anyway. <laughs> <laughs> hallelujah. Rick Renner, Tony Cook. Glory to God. I mean, that, you know, and Jess and Cap took care of the youth church. Uh, Olivia came and did one of the services. So they had Olivia with them, and, um, you know, she's, she's just a little fireball. Hallelujah. 
All righty. So they'll be sharing soon on Sunday. We're going to give them the Sunday morning service and let them go for it. All right? So you want to be here for that. Amen? And uh, they will. I know they will, but for all those who've been supporting and helped support and gave towards that trip, thank you. Um, I know they will do the same thing also, but I just want to go ahead and say that. Hallelujah. All right, it's time to receive the Sunday morning tithe and offering. If you need an offering envelope, um, they're on the seat back in front of you, giving you know, that way, giving them through electronic means, through Cash App or PayPal. That information is on the screen for you to be able to do that. Hallelujah. While you're doing that, um, I want to mention, in case you didn't notice, the front porch going up, the entrance cover. Okay? Um, we got a really good price, and so we said, when can you start? And so they started Monday, uh, Tuesday of this past week. Um, the only reason we didn't get further is when we went to go get the metal roofing, nobody has it locally except one place who wanted an exorbitant amount per panel. It was going to take six panels of their sizes, okay? An exorbitant, $105 a panel. That's, that's $630. That wasn't the trim, the caps, anything. That was just the metal for the roof. It wasn't the, you know, um, what do you call it? It goes up underneath the flashing. The flashing, the, root, the cap that goes over top of it, the trim that goes on it, it wasn't any of that. Just that. With a three-week delivery time. Okay? We're like, <laughs> yeah, right. Um, found a place down in Lexington. The whole thing was $350. Everything. Trim, metal, everything. Be ready this week. Okay? Normally ready in 24 to 48 hours, but they were behind. Think, okay. <laughs> so that's why it's not done. Okay, there's more, there's more woodwork to do, okay? You're going to have that look where you've just got the post in the middle and the ones that V out on the very front. Have you all seen that porch look? And then back here on the metal wall, there's going to be wood going across there um, so that when up there it's all going to be stained wood, okay? That'll be stained. Hallelujah. I am not staining. Freddie's staining, okay? So I want to put that out there because um, we did get a great price, and we went ahead and moved on it, but we like, we'd also like to get that money back, okay? So look into the building funds, see what God would have you to do. Uh, our job is going to be under five when all said and done, um, which is a great price because we got prices from 12 to 17 was, our, was our, the uh, bids that we had on it before. So we're going under five, which is awesome. I don't have the exact price yet because everything's done, okay? That's a great price. I'll be honest with you, that's just, that's a really great price. Amen. Hallelujah. Does anybody else think that's a great price? I mean, especially when, we, when our first bids were 12 and 17 and that kind of stuff, I'm like, I ain't paying you twelve, fifteen thousand dollars $15,000 to do that. So we waited. And we waited. And then we got a great price. Hallelujah. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. So, um, Giving into the building fund, anything you give, just designate building fund for that particular, you know, even if you're giving all in one thing. On PayPal, you can put, um, on Cash App, I know you can put in the memo, you can put your amount, and then you can just put up there $50 for this building fund, or $50 for missions, or 50, you know, whatever, okay? You do what the Lord says do, or your heart says do. Okay. Well, how much do you want me to give, Pastor? Well, if you want to give the whole thing, that's fine, okay? But I'm not going to pressure you say you've got to give so much to we just ask you to search your heart, see what you would do, what the Lord would have you to do, and uh, you do that, and we're not coming to see you if you don't. <laughs> we're not going to come, come pound on you and, and try to manipulate. I will say this, though. Uh, it's lowered the temperature in the foyer at the door 15 degrees at least because of that sun coming in right there. Um, it's, it was hot right there, and it's just wiped that out. Amen? Y'all ready to give? Hallelujah. Father, we thank you for all the people. Thank you for their tithe. Thank you for their offerings. Thank you for giving in the special offerings. We thank you they, they follow and do what you're in their heart because God loves a cheerful giver. Hallelujah. They're not giving grudgingly nor of necessity for God loves a cheerful giver. And so, Father, I thank you that as they follow after their heart and do that which is in their heart, we thank you you bless them abundantly for it. In Jesus' name, amen.
and amen. Praise God. Brother Joe, receive the in-house offering. Those that are given electronically, go ahead and press the send button. Hallelujah. And we call you blessed. We call you favored. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name, amen. And after that, Children's Church, you guys are running over each other. What you got there, buddy? Woo! Meow! <laughs> Open your Bibles, if you will, to the first 14th chapter of 1 Corinthians. We have been ministering um, for several weeks on the purpose of the baptism of the Holy Spirit or Holy Ghost. And Brother Shambach used to say, I, I know the Bible says Holy Spirit. He said, but there's just something about that Holy Ghost. <clears throat> if you've never heard Shambach preach, you'd have to go listen to one of his tapes. Um, uh, interesting thing about, him, about Brother Shambach, Buddy Harrison said that he was the greatest preacher of faith he ever heard. Not teacher, but preacher of faith. Hallelujah. And, and I have to say, Brother Shambach had it going on. I'm telling you. How many ever got to hear Brother Shambach? Yeah. All right. Um. <clears throat> In talking about the baptism of the Holy Spirit and the purpose, and as you know, we have covered um, the validity of being filled with the Holy Spirit as a separate experience from being born again. They are not the same thing. And... Um, <clears throat> they're, they're a different experience. We've proven that um, more than once. There's enough, there's enough New Testament book of Acts passage to support that thoroughly and clearly. We did do that. We also covered the fact that when you're, born, when you're baptized with the Holy Spirit, you speak in tongues. And we proved that out with uh, the Word of God. Amen. They are not the same. And so then we, we come to, well, what's, you know, we're talking about the purposes, thank you, of um, praying in the Spirit, sp praying in tongues, speaking in tongues. Um, you know, a lot of um, misconceptions were created by um, people, okay? We came up with kind of, you know, denominational-based ideas that weren't necessarily scriptural, you know, um, we tarried, you know, because Jesus told the, the disciples to go and tarry in Jerusalem until they be endued with power from on high. After that, the Holy Ghost has come upon you. Um, we we kind of picked that up in our Pentecostal circles, which I grew up Pentecostal. And we tarried for the Holy Ghost. We'd go to the altar. You know, we would go during every time we had a guest revivalist. We'd come down to the altar and tarry for the Holy Ghost. Now, whenever you got filled... You stop coming to the altar. Stop coming and praying. You say, well, why haven't you been in church lately? That you heard? I got the baptism. I got it. And they stopped tarrying. Well, the reason they tarried because the Holy Spirit, had, remember Jesus said, I, uh, that if I go not away, the Holy Spirit will not come unto you. But if I go away, I'll pray the Father send the Holy Ghost, the other comforter. Amen. And so they were only tarrying because he hadn't been sent in this dispensation yet. But on the day of Pentecost, they were all in one accord in one place. There came a sound from heaven as of a mighty rushing wind and filled all the room where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire and sat upon each of them. What happened? The Holy Ghost came. From that day since, you don't need to tarry. That means to wait. Tarry means to wait. Wait on the Spirit. But since he showed up, you don't have to wait. We see that. Have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? We know so much as heard of any, whether there be any Holy Ghost. You know? Then Paul lays hands on them and they all get filled with the Holy Ghost. No tarrying involved. Anywhere else in the book of Acts, we don't see any tarrying to receive the Holy Spirit. As soon as they ask, they were, they're filled. As soon as they lay hands on them, they're filled. Amen? So tarrying for the Holy Spirit is over. Tarrying after you're filled with the Holy Spirit has begun. What? Waiting on God, praying in the Spirit. You're not waiting to receive the Holy Spirit. Now that you've received him, you do more waiting and waiting before God 
to hear, hear his voice. Okay. So last week we, we did talk about resting in God by praying and saying, you know, this is the uh, um, refreshing wherewith you shall, be, you shall rest. Okay. And, um, you know, with uh, another tongue will he speak to this people to whom the, he said, the, this is the rest wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest, and this is the refreshing. There is rest praying in the Spirit. Now, I, I want to um, diverge from some concepts we may have. Um, you do not have to have a mountain shaking, moon, room moving time of praying in the Spirit every time you pray in the Spirit. You can actually be going about your business praying in the Spirit. Now, I don't, I don't recommend going out into the mall while you're just walking through the mall going, I'm not going to think you're crazy. But I'm praying in the Spirit. Well, you know, Why? You can, if you go speak to it with you and God, you can do it quietly in that setting. What should you do in the mall? Do you know Jesus? Pray in the spirit till you're full and saturated and ready and then go witness. They ain't going to get a thing out of you speaking in tongues. Hello? Not if they're unsaved and you're walking through the mall, they ain't going to get anything out of it. So we need to learn to govern according to, even to Scripture. <clears throat> Amen. Hallelujah. We don't need, you know, we don't need to. Uh, now, when you, when you're, if you get in a room by yourself and you want to scream <laughs> and raise the roof, go ahead. But in certain settings, it's not the right thing to do. Not that praying in the Spirit is the wrong thing. You can pray in the Spirit without being a spectacle. You, can speak, you know, you can speak quietly. And if they're not being interpreted, then speak to himself. Okay? But it will bring rest. You could be in the middle of a situation, and you just need, you could just, thank you, Father. Thank you for the Holy Ghost. Thank you for, oh, you can be really quiet, praying in the Spirit, praying quietly. Amen. Amen. We, and, and being getting what rest, rest with God, rest in the Spirit of God, Amen, Amen. And you could be doing the things you do. So, without making a scene where people aren't getting anything out of it, they just think you're crazy and don't want anything to do with you. Because what they need to know is how to get saved. Now it's different. We're in a meeting. We're in pray, we're praying in a prayer room. We're, you know, we're just you know. <clears throat> we're not going to think you're crazy. All right? But if you're, if you're praying in the Spirit, which is bringing you into rest, this is with you and God. You don't share everything you do intimately with your wife or husband in public loud, do you? This is the intimate time between you and God. Okay? Because it is divine communication with God. 1 Corinthians chapter 14. Look at verses 1 and 2. Follow after love. That's what it's agape, Greek word agape for charity here. Love and desire spiritual. Now remember when we first came along these lines, when we talked about spiritual, it is in the Greek, it is plural. The word gifts is not in the Greek. It's italicized. You look in your Bible. I'm going to start encouraging y'all. I think we may need to get back to, I know we put the scriptures up, and it is easy to get into the habit now that we put them up on the wall, not to have your Bible. Now, I'm going to encourage you to start bringing your Bible again and your notebooks because God's going to be saying things. <laughs> okay, Cap. <laughs> Cap goes. <laughs> because God's going to be saying things you need to write down. Amen. Now, this is not a rebuke. This is an encouragement. I've done the same thing. But it's up there on the screen. What I did, you know, there's something about maybe writing a note in your Bible that when you come back and read that verse again, you know, oh yeah, oh yeah, it'll it'll speak to you. Amen. 
writing into a notebook, looking over your notes. It's important. Amen? And so, look here. He says, things that are spirituals. Hallelujah. What is that? Things of and pertaining to the Holy Ghost. Follow after love and desire things of and after the Holy Ghost. Don't you want to be um, pursuing things of the Spirit? Don't you want to be in the flow of the Holy Ghost? Amen. Well, he says, follow love and spiritual things, things of the Holy Ghost. Now, now remember, we've said this before. I'll say it again. The letters to the church at Corinth were very corrective. They were corrective letters. They were flaky. They needed a lot of correction. They had gotten, I mean, Paul even said, guys, you, you come behind in no gift. I mean, they, they are rocking and rolling. They're speaking in tongues. They're casting out. I mean, they're just crazy. But they went off the other end. So Paul had to write two, really four. We know from internal evidence there were two other letters we don't have that he wrote to the church of Corinth. <coughs> I remember that movie Zorro where they're going to do something because this is going to take a lot of work. <laughs> Paul started writing letters to them and went, this is taking a lot of work. <laughs> Hallelujah. And so he comes back after saying that and, uh, and then he says, um, desire spiritual gifts, but rather that you may prophesy or moreover that you prophesy. For... He that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men. That's why I say walking through the mall shouting in tongues is not going to be beneficial. That's not, you're not speaking to men. Amen? But unto God. For no man understandeth him, howbeit in the spirit he speaketh mysteries. Master, Masteria. Divine secrets. Now think about this. He speaketh not unto men, but unto God, divine secrets. What's he doing? Communing with God. When, you are, when you're speaking in tongues, you are communing with God. Now that's not talking about the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. Because that is given as a message and interpreted, and we'll cover that scripture in a minute. But when you're just speaking in tongues, you are talking to God. You're not, I'm, if I start speaking tongues, I'm not talking to Daniel. Me and Daniel are not having a conversation. I'm speaking to God. Men don't understand. We, you don't even understand. That's why it's the gift of tongues and interpretation of tongues. See, that interpretation is given by the Spirit. It is not the gift of translation. I've seen somebody give a 10-minute almost message in tongues, and then the, the uh, tra interpretation was you know, half, or vice versa. Usually what happens there is when, they, uh, when the message is given in tongues and the interpretation starts, they'll step out of the interpretation and into prophecy. Okay? So we have these, these, this spiritual activity going on, but we've, met, we've gotten so indoctrinated with ideas of what speaking in tongues or speaking in tongues is or trying to defend it to others who don't believe in that manifestation that we, 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 doct we, make, we create a circle of doctrine around it and we're defensive. And even if they come up with, a, with something that says you're being stupid and you are, we won't receive it because you're against tongues. Okay? Understand what we're doing. Some people don't want to be filled with the Holy Spirit because they've seen people filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> don't be one of them. Okay? I said, don't be one of them. Understand? So we talked about rest last week. This week, he that speaketh in an unknown tongue speaketh not unto men, but unto God. Why? In the spirit, he speaks mysteries, divine secrets. Your spirit. Now, um, over in 
Hebrews 12, 9, God the Father is referred to as the Father of spirits. So we're able to commune spirit to spirit with the Father of spirits. There is divine interaction. There is divine communication going on in the spirit. Now your mind's unfruitful. But God is making, making a spiritual download into you during that time of communion. There's intimacy taking place. There's a learning of his voice. You're connecting with him at a level that bypasses your psyche. And you're entering into a place that will be uploaded to your mind over time. I'm trying to use terms that people understand these days. Okay? How many know what a virus on a computer is? It's hidden in there. You don't even know it's there. Until one day, you have a certain set of keystrokes or whatever, and it unleashes it. And it, uh, it uploads into your system and starts running. Well, let's say God's, what God does with you is not a virus, but it is planting something in you that at some, some point in time, it'll be revealed, uploaded into you, your thinking, and you'll know it's God speaking. And you'll be able to start acting on that. Revelation will come and understanding will come. Hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. You know, may, you know it's like Paul. How many, remember, how many of you ever read the passage where Paul writes that he knew a man above 13 years ago, whether in the body or out of the body, I know not. Such was caught up to the third heaven and heard things unlawful to be uttered. Whether in the body or out of the body, I know not. Now, most believe this is when he was stoned and left for dead. Okay? And then God raised him up. But he went to heaven, went into the, he called it the third heaven. Okay? And saw the new creation man. Which he spent the rest of his life revealing in scripture, in his writings, what it means to be in Christ. And he said he couldn't even utter it. He had to, he had to um, assimilate it and then slowly release it in writings over time. Until we get a full picture of the recreated human spirit what it means to be in Christ Jesus. That's what his letters are primarily about. Other than correcting the Corinthians. Okay. <laughs> but all through it, it's the new man. Put off the old man. Put on the new. We're to walk in a whole new plane, a whole new sphere altogether. Amen. Paul, what happened? He was in the spirit and saw, and saw all of this. And it took him the rest of his life to write this out. So as we commune with God, praying in tongues, let's just say tongues, it is not the phenomena of glossolalia. This is not a phenomenon. This is a true experience with God. It's a biblical, true, desired, promised experience with God. Bypassing your mind. Why? Because your mind wants to filter. Your mind is a filter. How many know that? We have to work on our mind because we'll filter stuff before we let it in with our minds. And we all have filters. Some of us, it's prejudice. That one ever big. You know? You look at something and you automatically think this. And no matter what they do, you're filtering it through that. That's what your mind does. It wants to filter based on this, that, whatever. But God has given us the ability to get past the filter of religion, past the filter of your personal, I don't know what I, I don't care what that book says. I know what I believe. Come here a little bit closer. Pop! You can slap upside the head. Because you need a checkup for the neck up. 
Yeah, yes, you need to renew your mind to the Word of God. But in that process, it still wants to filter. By praying in the Spirit, you bypass the filter. And God can interject things into your spirit that your mind would have shut out. Hello? And cut off and keep it from coming in. Because your mind wants to go, well, what about that? Well, I think it. Well, it's amazing how fast the mind works. I say, it's amazing how fast the mind can work. I mean, you can go boom, and, and, and all this thought has just gone. Shoo. It would take you 20 minutes to say it, but it's already in there. Okay? Are y'all here? You go home. So, by having divine communication, God can get things into you and circumvent the filter and then let it reprogram the filter. Amen. Because it comes up out of you instead of from out here, to, if your mind's involved. And it begins to move the mind in a different direction. Lead you to the scriptures that say this. And you're now reading because of the, remember the teacher? Holy Ghost is our teacher. He'll bring all things to your remembrance, whatever I said to you. As you're reading scripture, the teacher picks up from here instead of things from out here and goes, now, read this. And this means this as you're reading it and you're going, but my, you always, I always thought, back up. You've had it wrong. You've had it wrong all this time. You know, because you grew up with Grandma. And grand, I mean, if Grandma said it, it was gospel. It wasn't my house. I'm going to tell you. Grand, if Grandma said it, it doesn't matter what the Bible says. Grandma was the Lord Jesus Christ in the flesh. I mean... That's, the, that's it. It's the truth. Hello? And you put Grandma and Aunt Louise together, and boy, you really sunk. Okay? Well, the Bible says this. Well, I don't know about that, but I know what Grandma said. I had a debate with a relative recently. We, we were there, and they wouldn't let us wash clothes on Sunday. My mama said, well, mama, the Bible doesn't say that. As a matter of fact, did you wash any clothes yesterday? Because yesterday was the Sabbath. <laughs> now, come on. Now, I, I know mama said. But the Bible said, I don't, I don't care. Mama said, I need to wash the clothes. I didn't get to wash the clothes. Like, what's wrong with you? We need divine communication with God. We need times of int intimacy with God. We need to pray in the Spirit more than we ever have. Now, I know this. We all know. We all say, I know this. What, what pastor's about to say, I already know it. Because we've all experienced it. When we start out in things, there's a zeal and there's a fire. And there's this, ha, with it. But we can go through life and somewhere down the way we're going to, well, yeah. And you let off a little bit here and a little bit there. Next thing, next thing you find yourself, going, yeah, I believe in that. I ain't done it in a while, but I believe in that. Hello? Yeah, I believe in speaking in tongues. Waiting for the revival so I can do it again. He used to come to church every time. Oh, well, yeah, I know. I, you know, I've been busy. <laughs> Praying in the Spirit. I, I said this earlier in the service. We don't have to have a wild Holy Ghost service to speak in tongues. We don't have to be alone in a, in a prayer room with your picture of Jesus. Now, here was my prayer room when I first got saved. Took my closet. I had that picture of Jesus, you know, where he's, 
he's sitting there. It's the side profile, you know. Got the long hair and the robe on and, you know. And then I had a pair of praying hands that I made in vacation Bible school when I was a kid. They were mounted in a frame and everything. And I had, he was facing this way and the praying hands were facing that way. It was perfect. It was God. And he had planned that out years in advance. And so I had the praying hands over here, praying to Jesus. Had a candle in there. It was my special place of prayer. You can have a special place of prayer without being with your picture of Jesus and the praying hands. Well, you can. I mean, I know most of y'all probably never saw uh, any Bruce Lee movies. I was a big Bruce Lee fan, you know. Kung Fu, Kung Fu, no child play. And um, so there's one scene in one movie. I can't remember if it's Enter the Dragon or not, or, I, I'm, or Return of the Dragon. I, I forget which one it is. But it's the one he goes into a room that's circular, and they surround him, and they got all the things, and he's been, he's been kicking back in with his nunchucks and stuff and just knocking people all over the room. And they got so many in there, he just sits down, crosses his legs, and hangs the nunchucks around his neck and sits there. Okay. You can be in the middle of chaos. Everything around you going wrong. Everything about, about, around you. And you can just be in your private prayer place and begin to pray and seek God and pray in the Spirit. Amen. Right in the middle of all that. Amen? And get divine communication from God. See, when you have divine communication from God, wisdom comes. Understanding comes. Direction comes. Amen? See, we're not just talking about doing this so we can be a Pentecostal. Get the baptism. I mean, I'm, I don't know why we never came up with little merit badges that says, I got it. <laughs> and then put in there in smaller letters, the baptism. You know, I don't know why we didn't do that. Anyway, hallelujah. <clears throat> That's divine communication. It's so vital to your spiritual health. Why? Well, Jude 20 says, but ye, beloved, building up yourselves on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. Well, that just means fervent prayer. Well, it didn't in 1 Corinthians 14. Amen. Paul referred to it as, I will I do. I'll pray in the Spirit, and I'll pray with my understanding. So praying in the Spirit is not praying with your understanding, according to Paul. I'll do both. I'll sing in the Spirit. I'll sing with my understanding. I'll pray in the Spirit, and I will pray with my understanding. He differentiates the difference between praying and communicating with God out of your knowledge and out with your mind and praying in the Spirit. Paul differentiates between the two. Jude says that when you pray in the Holy Ghost, you build yourself up on your most holy faith. Now the word build comes from a Greek word that in modern language uh, obviously, it didn't mean it back then. It didn't have that parallel, that allegory back then of charging like a battery because they didn't have batteries. Oh, yeah, well, Asia, the aliens came down. Well, this is not Indiana Jones and the crystal of the, and the crystal skull, crystal skull or whatever. Okay. Cap's most favorite Indiana Jones movie. I know. You build yourself up. How many of you ever had a dead battery? Right, crank your car and it goes, click. If it's really dead, it just goes. Okay. Or you go out there, you crank, you put it in there and start turning, it goes. Ee, ee, ee. Okay. Well, you pull the other car up, you get out and get your jumper cables, you snap, hook them up. You can't just jump in there and turn it on. You got to run that for a while. It's got to run enough juice over into that battery to get it charged enough to crank. And then once it cranks the alternator and the, the engine itself will, will build it, finish you know, charging it if you run it long enough. Okay? Jude says, but ye, beloved, charging yourself on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. See, we hear the word of faith preach. We hear faith taught. We told us, you know, study the word, feed on the word. I mean, be doers of the word, catch the spirit of faith. I mean, I'll, but there is some, there's a key here that for a large part of our word of faith circles, we've left out praying in the spirit. 
Because, see, that praying in the Spirit is what? Divine communication with God. And as you're in communication with God, what is he? He is um, omnipotent. He's all-powerful. And that power, that anointing, the glory is filtering into you and charging you. And it's charging your faith. I put in my, um, my ink jets into my HP printer, and it comes up and says, um, don't, do, don't do such and such and such. Um, batteries, I mean, the cartridges are charging. It's an inkjet. It's, like, it's a cartridge of ink. We need charging. It's charging molecules, and it's doing things in there to make it so it'll work. I don't know all that. I don't understand all of that. People way smarter in that realm know about that. I just know that's what it's doing. Okay? So it's charging the ink. Charging the ink! You know? You'll think twice before you write your, write your finger with a big pen next time, won't you? When how much juice is in there? As we feed on the Word and we're stating the Word, we're sitting under the Word, we're meditating on the Word, praying in tongues, will God will charge your faith. Empower it. Things will be taking place you don't even cognitively understand. Don't get so caught up on step one says do this and step two does that and step three says this and four and five say this and if I do all that then I'll have the answer. Not unless you're in faith. The steps are not faith. Now they may be guideposts to where you are in building your faith but they're not faith. Get into the spirit. Get into the closet. Get with God, wherever it is, in your car. I mean, you know, taking a shower, just keep your mouth shut enough so you don't drown. Um, <laughs> praying in the Holy Ghost. Because now, see, in that divine communication, he's going to be taking and charging faith that's in you. Build yourself up on your most holy faith, praying in the Holy Ghost. See, we for so long have thought speaking in tongues is just this, Ecstatic, you know, adventure with God that I get goosebumps with. I get, woo, and me feel like John Travolta. I got chills, they're multiplying, woo! Now you're going to run around the church. Hello? And missing out, God's doing things. There are things going on that if we get caught up with all the outward manifestations, We'll forget about the inward work that's taking place. And you're a spirit being. And God wants to do an inward work in you. Hello? God's at work inwardly. Doing things. Building. Strengthening. Revealing. And praying in the spirit is one of those um, parts of that equation. To build you up and make you strong. As a believer. To make you effective in the kingdom of God. To make you a strong believer. Amen. So as you build and charge yourself with your most holy faith. Yeah, we're going to keep preaching the word. We're going to keep telling you how to receive from heaven. What to do with your faith. How to build faith. How to catch the spirit of faith. <clears throat> That's all true. None of that is, none of that is wrong. But we need to add to. There's an element of this process I believe we've not paid enough attention to. Listen, it don't take six years of meditating on praying in tongues. It's a do thing. You get filled, you do. Now notice Paul says back in 1 Corinthians chapter 14, I will. Again, I go back to Grandma. <clears throat> grandma didn't pray in tongues. She didn't believe in that speaking whenever you wanted to. You had to have Paul Jackson come and do a revival. And then somewhere in that meeting, you might have two or three words slip out. And that's the rest of her life. Because Paul Jackson came, you know. I mean, Brother Paul. Now, hey, man, could preach. 
I mean, he was, I mean, he was, a, he was a preacher. Hallelujah. I mean, he was a good Pentecostal preacher. I loved him. But that's the only time Grandma would say anything in tongues. Grandma, you can pray in the Spirit. Ah, ah, I mean, she, you know, of course, Grandma's the gospel, so there you go with the family. That's just the way it is. You know? I mean, she might go, woo! Every three years. <laughs> but the Apostle Paul wrote and said, I will. He didn't say God made him. He didn't say that you got to wait for the right, you got to wait for Shekinah glory to show up. <laughs> now I'm waiting, I mean, I'm excited about Shekinah glory coming. Do y'all know about that? October 6, 7, 8, Friday night, Saturday night, Sunday morning. Okay. <laughs> okay. All right. <clears throat> Shekinah glory. That's about six, six weeks out. So I'm excited because that's how they walk. <laughs> they walk over there all the time. <laughs> Nathan says, she looks into your soul. <laughs> Sends Ross minister to you and looks at you and them little bitty Jewish eyes just Reaches right into your soul. <laughs> Love that woman. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. But as we're praying in the Spirit, and we're building up ourselves on our most holy faith, oh my, things you heard, things that you're struggling with about faith, you're building yourself up. And the Spirit of God's at work on that. <coughs> and all your questions in your head, I just say head, in your head. I'm a country boy. It slips out every once in a while. You know, all those things in your head that we talked about before, divine communication, you're circumventing the mind that would try to undo what you heard in the service. As you pray in the Holy Ghost, the Spirit of God takes that and starts, you know, going, and he starts working in there. And he shuts down this, I'm going to use electronic switching theory here. He's going to shut down this gate over here and open this one over here that gets around that stupid thought you had and gets it up to you. Well, I don't understand. Did you get anything out of praying in the Spirit? Yeah. I build myself up a most holy faith. Did you understand what you were saying? No, I wasn't speaking to me. I was speaking to God. Amen. Amen. Isn't that right? I'm not speaking to me. I'm speaking to God. Besides, did it mean anything to you? It was a divine secret. Think about it. So, as we pray, in this, and we need to get back to this, church. This needs to become a, a, a part of your life. Paul said, even in his correction to the crazy church, I thank my God I speak in tongues more than you all, or all of you put together, literally in the Greek. <coughs> that was a task. If you outspoke the Corinthian church in tongues, you were something else. Because they were so bad, he had to write four letters to straighten them out. As I said, there's evidence of two other letters that we don't have, that we don't have them, but you know, internally from the books themselves, there was there's a... a Another two letters. This is speculation. It's just not doctrines. I don't think you whatever. Okay. Right, bro, right, Brother Bill? Amen. Hallelujah. So we have, we charge ourselves. Think about the value. Come on now. Think about the value of spending time in church and hearing messages preached. And you go out and you go, well, I don't quite say after, just keep doing it. Keep studying, keep meditating. But now let's add to that the great value and the wealth of worth of praying in the Spirit that you'll build yourself up from the inner man as a, my spirit by the Holy Spirit of God speaketh. As you pray and commune with God, all that stuff you're hearing, and you're going, well, I'm not quite, I'm not quite getting, I'm not going, that's okay. Go pray in the Spirit. I mean, chill. 
Amen? And let the Spirit of God begin to work in you with those things you've heard. And bring out of that, that understanding, that revelation. Now, we're not saying, just pray in the Holy Ghost all the time. Don't ever study the Bible. You don't need a pastor. You don't need to hear the Word. Just pray in the Spirit. That's, that's, that's the, we're not talking about going from one ditch to the other. We're talking about an aid and a help to you. Remember, he's a paraclete. He's a helper. Amen. Praying in the Spirit, that communion's going on. And all this the stuff the mind's getting cluttered up with, he's down there going, Shut up. we don't care about the mind, let's just work down here. We'll, 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 we'll reprogram the mind. We'll take that word and we'll, 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 we'll turn this off and turn this on and it'll, and it'll all make, it make sense and work. He's in there working, not from here, but from here. He's working on the inside. Hallelujah. And you enter into that place with this divine communication and charging. And you truly become a person of the Word and the Spirit. So don't let all the naysayers and the anti-tongue talkers and the people who write books on the phenomena of glossolalia and why it's of the devil... Another thing, stop listening to people talk about, well, I know somebody, they came to the altar to get filled with the Spirit, passed their hands on them, and they, got, they started speaking in tongues of devils. A, you know, let, now let me say number one. If they're born again, are you here? If they're a born again believer, they can't. Because Jesus said, if you ask the, how much more shall he, he, he give the Holy Spirit to those, his children, those that ask him. Will he give them a fish? No. Now, if they're not born again, you, you know, when you come up, you're under false pretenses anyway. Amen. That's a different story. But if, you know, if you have a son, ask for any, a father, give him a stone, will he give him a fish? Will he give fish for a fish, give him a serpent? How much more shall the father give the Holy Spirit to those to them that ask him? To them that ask him. So people got doing that all the time. Why? They want to discredit being filled with the Spirit. Why does Satan want to discredit being filled with the Spirit? Because it brings rest. It brings refreshing. It's divine communication. It charges you on your faith. And, everything, and basically, everything is antithetical to every, what he wants to do in your life. Everything. He wants to bring disruption. He wants to bring restlessness. He wants to bring, you know, um, weakness. He wants to drain you. So why would he want you speaking in tongues? You're, you're charging. Why would he want you speaking in tongues? He don't want you talking to God. Why would he want you to have rest? He wants you to be wore out. Wearied. How many of you have ever been really wore out? Is it easy to learn under the circumstances? No. I remember when Jesse was working on a major, major project. Um, was it your senior year? Was it your senior project? Her senior project at High Point University in interior design. And she went 54 hours without sleep. She started hallucinating. <laughs> Literally. And it had to be done by, it, was, it, was, you know, it wasn't one of those things that you can, well, I'll turn it in late. No. Oh. This is, this is four years in graduation on the line. It's got to be done on this timetable. She's up 54 hours without sleep. Started hallucinating. See, Satan wants you weary. He wants you to come to church so tired you couldn't hear her. You, uh, the Holy Ghost would come in in a Kelly, blue, Kelly green blazer, white pants, pink shirt, white shoes. <laughs> Hello? And a blue cat with a pink feather in it. And you wouldn't recognize him. You know, okay. He wants you weary spiritually. He wants you wore out spiritually. He wants you so that your spirit is just so overwhelmed with worry and, and doubt and the circumstances of life and all this stuff that you can't hear God. 
But God says, I got, I got something for you. I'm going to send the Holy Ghost. And as you pray in the Spirit, you're going to get rest. As you pray in the Spirit, you're going to be refreshed. As you pray in the Spirit, you're going to charge yourself up in the inner man. As you pray in the Spirit, you're going to commune with me, Spirit to Spirit, with the Father of Spirits. And it's going to be transformative in your life. So in all this activity Satan's trying to do to you, loses his grip. It loses its grip because you're, you're praying in the Spirit and rest is coming. Let me tell you something. Your mind can weary you. Absolutely. Your mind can weary you through worry, the whatabouts, the shoulda, coulda, wouldas. And there's just, there is there's places that you just have to shut that down. And one of the ways to do that is praying in the Spirit. Praying in the Spirit until rest and refreshing come. Yeah, but I don't feel anything. It ain't about faith, it ain't about feelings. The things of God are not about feelings. They're spiritual. Hello? They're spiritual. I have prayed in the Spirit, prayed in tongues before, and you're sitting there going, how long have I been praying? Three minutes? <laughs> Literally. I mean, you're, you're, your mind, and your mind's running a billion miles an hour. It's over here, and it's over, I mean, one minute it's over here, and then ping, it's over there. And then it's like a pinball in, in, in the machine. Bing! Here and down here going, brr, 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 trying to keep it up, trying to keep it up. And you get so frustrated, tilt, tilt, tilt. What are you doing? You just keep going. You keep pressing. Because while you're doing it, you're starting to do things in your inner man that are going to start bringing calmness to your, how do you know? Because the Bible says so. This is the rest Wherewith you shall cause the weary to rest. Amen. To whom he said, this is the rest. Wherewith you shall cause, cause the weary to rest. Now, that's the Bible. The words. Now, we know from 1 Corinthians 14, Paul quotes this verse. Talking about tongues. He's praying in tongues. He quotes this verse. So we know Isaiah really is prophesying about the baptism of the Holy Spirit, praying in tongues, stating this is going to cause the weary to rest. Hallelujah. And Paul says we, we speak to God, divine secrets. <clears throat> I like a, Brother Hagin tells a story about he had a family member, something was going on, they were going to sue somebody, sue him or sue his relative or something. And, um, they came by and they said, I'm going to tell you one thing. When I, I get through with you and you get through with this family, da, 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 da. he said, you go ahead. I got inside information. Yeah. They said, what? Whoa, 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 whoa. He said, I ain't going to tell you. I got inside information. I know how it's going to turn out. Now, 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 now Kenneth, now, now, look, look, I ain't got an argument with you. <laughs> sort of back, sort of back paddling. Finally, they quit altogether. What was that inside information? He'd been praying in the spirit. <laughs> He had inside information. Everything's going to be all right. He didn't tell them all that, what it was. It was enough to freak them out. I mean, they got, oh, he's got something on me. I better, I better leave this alone. Kind of like God putting the armies in der, uh, uh, derision, and they all fought and killed themselves. Yeah. Amen? Yeah. See? Mine's been giving you a fit. Go pray in the Spirit. Mm -hmm. How long? You, keep, you just keep going until you get the rest. Well, I ain't got time to sit down that long. Walk around praying in the Spirit. Pray in the Spirit in your car. Pray in your breath. Hello? You're at work, and you've got work time on the computer, and you don't have to. You don't have to I'm, well, I'm in a cubicle. They don't have to hear you. It don't have to be so loud that, you know, you rock heaven and earth. 
You're a category, you know, five hurricane, a, you know, 9.3 magnitude earthquake. You don't have to be all that. You can pray under your breath. Amen. God hears. Got good hearing. See, settle the mind. And as your mind settles, have you ever been in a room with a lot of noise? And you're trying to hear something? And somebody could be speaking at one tone with a room full of people. You can't hear a thing they say. But as soon as they're all out of the room, that person is still speaking at that same tone. You can hear everything they say. What? The clutter of noise. See, in our, in, our, in our world, we have cluttered things that try to clutter up our mind. And it's noise. But when you pray and get to the place of refreshing and rest, you can hear the divine communication with God. Hello. You can build up on your faith. Because if you hear God speak to you in your spirit, now he can talk to you about the word, about your faith, about what he wants for you. Amen. And next week we're going to talk about maintaining spiritual strength. Amen. Hallelujah. Maintaining spiritual strength. Glory to God. There's a change in the spirit. There's been a turn in the atmosphere. And what God is working, we have a part that we are to fulfill. And yes, when we came to this land, we celebrated, we have our land, we have our place, we've entered into our land. And the joy and the excitement of having our own operation center was a necessary step, but not the end. For that, the, the things that now come are of the Spirit, in the Spirit, that will be life-changing to masses. There has been an atmosphere change. The soldiering, sojourning is over. The establishment and firm foundation is placed. And the mission is before us. To go forth. To do the will of God. To carry the message to the nations. And our Jerusalem. Well, we're old. I didn't realize we had that many people older than me in here. And we had another one walk in. <laughs> Several years. <laughs> <laughs> I would just, that's, that's the absolute facts. Don't worry about it. We got Joe and Steve and Dick and Bill and I don't ask the women because we don't upset them. Benny, I don't know how Daniel is. Don't move huh? Daniel's older than me. <laughs> I'm the young whippersnapper in here. He said, look at us, we're old. No. We're experienced. We've walked, we've seen, we've heard, we've borne precious seed. And this is the hour for harvest. And it will not be done with the methods of man. And it shall not be accomplished through techniques of man. But it shall be done in the spirit and accomplished in the spirit. To where people will say, how did you do that? How did that happen? How could this take place with the, your congregation and their age and, and all this? But it shall not be that man shall take glory. And there will be no way to teach your technique. For it's of the Spirit. And of the Holy Ghost. And we'll just walk in obedience. And we'll walk in the light. And God will do his will. 
And the, that which has been spoken for generations shall be. Hallelujah. 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 <laughs> Glory to God. Yeah. When God begins to declare, we have to take hold of it. Amen. Why hadn't you said something before now? Or why has it been so long? We went 1,500 years from Malachi to John. There was nothing. And then there came one crying in the wilderness, prepare you the way of the Lord. 1,500 years of silence. No prophets. No word. But then, but then, so we don't have to, we're not going to have to wait 1,500 years because you guys are going to be really old. <laughs> I'll still be seeing visions. <laughs> hallelujah. I said, hallelujah. Oh, Father. Father, oh, shadabadaba. I know that you're preparing our hearts. I know, oh my, my, oh I see, yes, yes, yeah, oh my, I see in the spirit. Yeah, I understand. Yeah, it's, this, is, this, is, this is specific to us. I see the spirit of God brooding over us. Oh my. Just as the Spirit got brooded over the waters, He's brooding over our church. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. I thank you, Father. Yes, hallelujah. He broods over us. And we're about the, the, the hatching process is taking place even as we speak. To walk into this. And we haven't even envisioned what it's going to be like. And the rate at which it will happen. And she, oh, my, 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 my. Thank you, Father. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. Glory to God. Jesus' name. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Amen. Now let me say this. Don't try to figure out how it's going to happen. Don't try to figure out what seminar we need to go to. Uh, we need to go to that church growth seminar. Yeah? You could go listen to a man with his ideas and mess up your whole everything. Well, that's a great idea. Yeah, but it's not what God told us to do. Well, I know he just told me it's going to be him. Amen. We're just going to follow him. I mean, if we follow some people that tried to, have tried to get us to follow this person's, you know, church growth, whatever, we would have moved without the cloud. And if you're in the desert, you don't want to move without the cloud. You want to go with the cloud? Are y'all here? You go home. If we had quit when we didn't think anything was happening, the cloud would have moved and left us behind. We're just going to move with the cloud. What does that mean? It means you follow the Holy Ghost. What does that mean? You pray in the Spirit. You enter into divine communication. You act on when he talks. Now I'm going to tell you, if the service coming up, we're going to lay hands on people who feel the Holy Ghost. So if we've been teaching, it's getting a stir in your heart. We're going to lay hands on people and get them filled with the Holy Ghost. That works in my ministry. I've had that happen. Lay hands on people and get filled with the Holy Ghost. It's something that God's got in my life. <clears throat> and when you get a church full of people filled with the Holy Ghost, it's kind of hard to get them filled. 
So go find some folk that aren't and bring them. And we will. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, thank you for the service. Thank you for this day. Thank you for your word. Thank you for the spirit of God. We are entering in to those things you spoke decades ago. And we've waited and wondered. We've cried. We've become weary, repented, wondered, but stayed and refused to quit. And now the fulfillment of the promise is at hand. And we say, here are we, Lord. Use us. Send us. We know that you're at work. And with great anticipation, look forward to what is springing upon us in this hour. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Well, praise the Lord. I think something's going on in the spirit. That spirit of prophecy. I haven't seen it like this in a long time. It's, it's just, it's hovering. What, what's that all about? It's God given the command line their instructions so we can launch everybody's ready what's the word you ever watch the movie um, uh, The Longest Day the, the D-Day invasion with uh, you know I mean everybody <laughs> <coughs> I mean John Wayne and Eddie Albert and you know Sean, yeah, but he's a, he's a goofus. Um, <laughs> British actors, I mean, you know, well-known British actors, and um, um, I'm trying to think of some of the other ones. Oh, gosh. Robert Mitchum, all these guys in it, and uh, they're all up on the battleships and everything, puking because they're, on, they, they're ready to go, and they can't go, and the boats are rocking in the harbor and all this stuff, and they're waiting for the word. And they give the command at the time they think it's the very best time to go. And maybe you're not puking, we're glad. <laughs> we're ready to go. And God is now speaking. And I will encourage you as Paul encouraged his son and Lord Timothy, fight a good warfare with the prophecies that have gone before thee. Hallelujah. We're entering, we're entering into something where it's not coming to church. We're entering into something that's not coming here going, okay, I attended this week. I've done my duty. We're coming into the place that we're being launched from to do what God said. In Jesus' name, amen. Praise God. I want to thank you for joining us today. We'd love to have you visit us in person here at Expedition Church of the Triad. We are located at 6302 Walter Wright Road here in Pleasant Garden, North Carolina. Now, we're just basically a suburb of Greensboro, 4.3 miles from the uh, Elm Eugene exit off of Interstate 85, exit 124. And a uh, real short drive over here from there. We'd love to have you be with us in person. Hallelujah. You will come. You'll see faith. You'll see the Word of God. You'll see the miracles, signs, and wonders. We'd love to have you with us, praise the Lord. Till we meet again, remember these words from 1 John chapter 5 and verse 4, that whatsoever is born of God overcometh the world, and this is the victory that overcometh the world, even our faith. So until we next time, remember uh, Expedition Church of the Triad, where we are living in victory, forged by faith. In Jesus' name, God bless you. See you next time. Have a great week.